but I feel like it's either this or it's that first I think, Well, that's one option, just a straight on, yeah. boom, and frame it around. I actually think this is kind of interesting. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to Creator Support in the Car, the show Hello. where we answer your questions about the business of being a creator. Today's question comes from Nail Couture. My question is about work schedule for creators. How much time do you spend to prepare for the video? What's included in the process, research, scripts, ordering some things if needed? All the above, how do you make each video? The first part I'm gonna talk about is what the bulk of our time is spent on in video making. We all operate as programming executives who have to make decisions on what is best for the channel, what idea would be best for the channel. So ideation and pre-production are gonna be our biggest bulks of how we spend our time on videos. What's the idea? What's the title and thumbnail? And then how do we logistically make this video? I would say if we're doing our job right, we're spending the majority of time on that part of the process. If we're not focusing on that part of the process and we just think of an idea all of a sudden and we go, oh yeah, let's shoot that, most likely we end up putting way more work on the back half because we didn't think through the idea. The shortest amount of time is actually shooting the video, primarily because we do sit down interviews or host to camera stuff. And then there's another long portion of time on post-production as well as distribution. I think distribution is a really important step in the process that you have to think about. It's a great quote from Tyler, the creator, about that. I'm still promoting my album that came out in June. It's a year out, and I'm still out here. Promote your Let people know. Be proud of that you made. So distribution is promoting, clipping, um, making sure people know that this thing is out. There's one other part of this that I think is important for creators to account for and schedule for. Your voice got really high there. Yeah, I think it's There's important. What? It's important. What other point? <laughs> that point is the opportunities that come from distributing a piece of content. Every time we as creators put out something into the world, yes, it's entertainment, yes, it's education, yes, it's something that, uh, a piece of art that we're putting out into the world, but it's also a surface for opportunity. And what that means is something goes out in the world, now maybe an advertiser wants to work with you. Maybe someone wants to do a partnership. Maybe somebody wants to come work for you. And having a deep understanding of how you're gonna deal with those opportunities, how you're gonna manage those opportunities, is important to keep that production schedule going. Ideation, packaging, pre-production, production, post-production, post -production, distribution, distribution, opportunities. Now, the second thing I wanna say is that we as creators are working on multiple videos at once that are in different stages of that production cycle. Imagine we have four videos going right now. One is in the early ideation phase and we have an idea bank where we keep all of our ideas. One is an interview that's in pre-production, which means we're developing a research doc and coming up with our angle for the interview. We have another that's in post-production right now and looking to get finalized. And we just put out our Mr. Beast episode, which is currently now in distribution. Technically, we have one, two, three, four videos in post-production. Yes. Yeah. We do. So there's way more layers, actually. There's a lot of layers. So we don't really think about our schedule in terms of like Monday through Friday. And I think this is common amongst creators. The way we think about our schedule is where are we in each of these videos? If we're doing our job really well, there's somebody responsible for each of these sections of the production cycle, almost like a relay race. Like mm -hmm. you pass the baton to the next person at the next point. Yeah. The problem is, as creators, when we're building a company, we also operate in a Monday through Friday schedule, which means people are scheduling meetings with us. We need to meet with our team. We also have other life things that come up. All of those things, because we are the bottleneck for everything we do at Colin and Samir, create breaks in production cycles. We are the one that sort of breaks that relay race and all of a sudden our time to finish continues to get longer and longer and longer. And that's something that a lot of creators face. They are the bottleneck many times to their team actually getting the job done on time. Now there's a lot of creators, creatives, and artists that we talk to who remove themselves from the normalcy of like Monday through Friday, Zoom meetings, team meetings, whatever like that. So they can focus on the production cycles of just getting videos done. And I think that's still the balance we're trying to solve because we do also operate our company. And so it's really, it does impact our production cycle to also act as the operators for our companies. So that's something we're trying to figure out from a schedule perspective, but let's take you into the world of our most recent interview with Mr. Beast and how that actually came together. 
So let's start at the beginning of the process with ideation. In this case, for our episode with Mr. Beast, it was actually more of like an ongoing conversation and a call that came inbound. Mm -hmm. So we got tipped off to the fact that this news was coming. We started talking with Jimmy about it and decided that this was a good opportunity to do an episode. From there, we'll build a research document. And these are pretty extensive. This is like everything that has happened since our last interview, quotes that he said on other podcasts, tweets that he's had, any takes that we want to consider in our angle for the interview. That takes us into packaging. Now, when it comes to packaging, I'm meeting with Jay, who helps us kind of talk through our thumbnails. And we start to mock up thumbnails with images that we just pull from the internet before we actually have original photography. So Jay and I just start talking through titles and thumbnails, and you can see one of them on the screen right now. We want to be pretty certain about our title and thumbnail, if not 100% certain, before going into our production. Now, for this interview, it's pretty different because we're going off-site. A typical episode for us is shot here in our studio, and we've set up our studio in a way where production setup is not like a big piece of the puzzle here. The reason that we spent more time on pre-production in North Carolina was because the last time we went and shot an episode with Jimmy, we felt like we actually did not have the time to fully set up how the podcast should look. And after the fact, we didn't feel like we asked all the questions that we really wanted to. And I'm just reliving the podcast and realizing how many questions I didn't ask that I wanted to ask. Not an easy feeling right now, David. We didn't feel fully prepared because we didn't have a research doc. And literally an hour before we filmed the episode, we were going out to buy the table that we would sit at. <laughs> we just weren't prepared. So we spent a lot more time and gave ourselves more days before the actual episode recording to make sure we had all of that figured out. So for this episode, we flew out on a Friday. We spent pretty much all of Saturday uh, rearranging this room and making sure that it looked good for the episode, testing mm -hmm. out different setups. We were thinking about doing this sort of dark and uh, more dramatic look, and then we ended up switching to what we went with, which is a little more light and accessible. We felt like it fits the brand more of our show. So that's what we did Saturday. Sunday, we thought we were going to record, but we didn't know really when that would happen. You never know because obviously Jimmy is really busy. There's a lot going on. We got to the tail end of the day. Mm-hmm. And I assumed we were not going to film. It was like 11.30. No. It was like 10.30. No. It was like 8 p.m. It was 8 p.m., yeah. And I was like, okay, this has been a really long day. It feels like 11.30. There's no way we're going to be shooting. And then we shot. And then we shot. Yeah. Yeah, and then Jimmy, after he got off a shoot, was like, all right, let's do it. Yeah. So you always have to be prepared for that type of thing. Oh, and the dramatic door closing. Are we going to just flow from that into starting? All right, Jimmy, welcome back to the show. I think that one ended up looking really good, though. Like, it yeah. was stressful to get there, but it ended up looking really good. So we shot for a couple hours, and then uh, we wrapped up all of the production gear, and then pretty immediately went into post. Jesse then synced and colored the episode. So putting it into a project, organizing it, making sure it looks good, sounds good. We run it through Autopod, which does like a first pass on all of the angles. And then, Samir, I think you started going through and grabbing mm -hmm. all the parts that had to do with the Amazon show. We just started listening to it immediately. I think like with a lot of our episodes, we just want to get familiar with the source material so we can start pulling intro moments. We can start making story decisions on what's going to come out uh, and what's going to stay in. Uh, and this one obviously was a quicker turnaround and had to do with a news hook. So we had it was a very different process for us. But basically, we'll get the project set up and then go into post. The thing that's really supported our post-production process is our showrunner, David. He's involved in every step of the process. So he's involved in the, the research, the ideation. Um, but then he's actually sitting during the interview, mm -hmm. taking notes about the interview. Mm -hmm. So by the end of our interview, we have what's called an interview map that he writes. And he basically is writing everything that we talked about and how the guest responded. That has really sped up our post-production process because he can dive into the timeline and be super familiar with it before he's actually editing. Um, and that's that's been really helpful for our workflow is to have someone that is so familiar with the work and also has a keen understanding of uh, storytelling so that we can make decisions collectively and it can take Colin and I out of that process and take us a step back to actually keep that production cycle moving, right? Like as creators, you wanna reduce yourself as the bottleneck as much as possible. No matter what, you will always be some level of bottleneck. 
but you want to reduce yourself. So when it comes to distribution, there's a lot of different points that we think about. We think about how it's going to show up across platforms, how we're going to talk about it. Things that we think about a lot is what is the story of the story? So like, obviously the story here is like Mr. Beast has this new Amazon show. The secondary story is he came on Colin and Samir to talk about it. And so we need to make sure that our show story is being told too. This is everything from cutting social clips far in advance of releasing the episode, making sure that we're ready to post them right when it's released. Mm -hmm. This is actually writing the tweet that comes out mm -hmm. the morning of. That's something we did and mocked up far in advance. And throughout the entire post-production process, right up until the very end, I'm also still having uh, meetings and conversations about packaging. Mm -hmm. So now we've actually taken photography on site and we're making multiple options. So three or four days before, we had these three options for thumbnails. The night before, we adjusted a little bit. And then even the days after release, we continued to A-B test different options. And we will continue to. As we get into this distribution phase, we're thinking about the shelf life of this video. Most of our videos get the majority of their views in the subsequent months after release, if not year after release. The thumbnail is a massive part of making sure that it has a long shelf life. Uh, and then making sure that there's clips and uh, promo and stuff to continuously talk about to make sure that it resurfaces. Yeah, many times creators, especially ourselves, are just on to the next one. We used to yeah. never really think about an upload after we published. It was like, all right, we're, we're moving on. We've got all these other layers of projects we need to think about. But like Tyler, the creator said, like never stop promoting your stuff, especially if you're proud of it. All right. So. That is how we think about scheduling. That is all the different things that go into us producing an episode. Uh, we are not perfect at this. We are still figuring it out. But the thing that I would urge all creators to think about is just that each of your videos is at a different stage in their production cycle. In order for this to work really effectively, think about it like a relay race where team members are actually handing off the baton at each of these production steps. Project ownership is super important to keep these moving and then figure out how to start to take steps back and understand where you step in as the creator to, uh, to eventually get the video out. So Nail Couture, that was a, a very nuanced, long answer to your question, but I think it's a really good question. So if either of you watching have other questions, put them in the comments and we'll answer some of them on Creator Support. I think we're in the deep end, Colin. Oh, we're deep in the deep end. Any gripes? Any gripes? I'll give you one. Okay, all right. When you get a cut you know on your- You know what's a gripe? When you ask someone if they have a gripe. But I know you don't. I don't have one. You yet. never go have ahead. one. Go yeah. Ahead. Go ahead. When you get a cut on your finger, you put a Band-Aid on it, mm -hmm. and then you have to wash your hands all day, and you got a wet Band-Aid on it. Well, then you got to redo the Band-Aid. Oh, You have to have a worst. surplus of Band-Aids. Yeah, I hate that whole experience. I think it's terrible. All right, so thanks for watching this episode of Creator Support. In the car, a whole new vibe for Creator Support. Let us know what you think, and if you have questions, Put them in the comments. We will answer them on this channel. Thank you, Nail Couture, for the question. Hopefully we answered. Wait, one more thing before we end this video. So the part of the production process that's the most important, and we stress this all the time, is coming up with the right ideas. If you have the right idea, the rest of the process is super easy. So Colin and I came up with this idea generation framework. There's a video and a worksheet linked in the description below. You put in your email and you can get access to it for free. It is a part of our 30-day cohort, which is called Creator Startup. Did our first cohort earlier this year. It's a mix of pre-recorded videos and live sessions where we walk you through the four key pillars of building your creator business, which is audience, value prop, process, and monetization. By the end of the cohort, you build a pitch deck that you can go use to pitch brands and sponsors. If you want to check out the idea generation framework, it's linked in the description. It'll also put you on the wait list for cohort two of Creator Startup. Thanks for joining me in the deepest end here and hello from Florence, Italy. See ya.